Creme 2 News begins now. Thank you for joining us on Creme 2 Plus. I'm Tim Pham. This is your Creme 2 News Week in Review. Join us as we take a closer look at some of the biggest stories in the Inland Northwest this past week. According to this press release, Schaefer has been thinking about retirement for a while, even during Mayor Woodward's administration. Now Mayor Brown is wishing him the best and says more details on the transition process will be released soon. I'm Assistant Chief Brian Schaefer. Brian Schaefer has been with the Spokane Fire Department for the better part of two decades, climbing the ladder to Assistant Chief and finally Fire Chief in May 2017. I'm humbled and really proud to lead this organization and serve as the city's fire chief. During his six years as chief, Schaefer became a familiar face on local news, leading the community through many emergencies, including wildfires and the COVID-19 pandemic. Schaefer also helped roll out the city's behavioral response unit in 2018, when the department experienced a double-digit increase in mental health calls. Obviously, we're not doing a good enough job. Uh, because we're dealing with the consequences right now and the numbers are staggering. Schaefer also embraced diversity within the department and was heavily criticized for posting this sign on the front door of every fire station in the city. Not everyone liked it when you did that. No, no, and I don't expect them to. You know, that's, that's the beautiful thing about the United States. We can certainly uh, have different beliefs, but at the, at the end of the day, you know, it can't be something that you just don't talk about. Schaefer at times had a bumpy relationship with the Spokane Firefighters Union. Krem 2 reached out to the union president. He wouldn't go on camera. The city says Schaefer will officially step down as chief on January 15th, but will stay with the department through March 31st, assisting with the transition. Assistant Fire Chief Tom Williams will remain in his role and continue to manage day-to-day -day operations, according to the mayor's office. And we have several calls and texts out to Chief Schaefer. We want to know more about his decision to retire. So far, he hasn't responded. In the studio, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Washington law went into effect at the start of the year. I looked through Washington and Idaho laws to find out how these new restrictions apply to a Washington resident buying a gun in Idaho and an Idaho resident buying a gun in Washington. Washington and Idaho, turns out they have laws that address this. Washington's RCW 941-124 focuses on firearm purchases by out-of-state residents. While it allows out-of-state residents to buy rifles and shotguns sold in Washington, they are also subject to Washington firearm purchasing laws. This includes the new 10-day waiting period, background checks, and safety training program as well. And if a Washington resident wanted to buy a firearm in Idaho, they would still be subject to Washington's 10 day waiting period. That's because Idaho law says out of state residents are subject to both Idaho purchasing laws and laws from the state they currently live in. Now, Washington State Patrol handles the background checks while firearm businesses play the middleman. Under the new law, gun dealers can't complete the purchase until the background check clears. Also, right now, there are multiple lawsuits filed against Washington to reverse the state's recent ban on assault style weapons. We are, of course, continuing to track the development of those cases. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. <laughs> I'm outside the Kootenai County Fire and Rescue Headquarters. This is where hundreds of Narcan kits like these are being held. This is a lot of it that's come back in just in a shipment today. In 2023, the only way to get Narcan in Idaho was from law enforcement and medical agencies. Keep stock coming in, keep stock coming out. But thanks to a new law at the new year, more people will have access to the overdose reversal drug. My goal would be to reduce fentanyl overdoses to zero. When Christopher Way with Kootenai several, County Fire and Rescue was approached with the opportunity to distribute so the Narcan, in, he jumped like at the chance. And we had uh, the right people in place to meet the mission, and I think it was matching our skill set. In November, the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare sent out a notice to law enforcement agencies in Idaho to lead Narcan distribution Narcan in the state. Way says here. participating in the program was a priority for him. We had a choice of either stepping in and helping out and being part of the solution. Kootenai County Fire and Rescue have already sent more than 5,000 cases of Narcan to public agencies like school and health districts across the state. We've seen a dramatic increase in Narcan use. Illegal fentanyl continues to be a significant problem in our area. 
area. Wei says the department received $1.8 million of RFP funding for Narcan distribution. These boxes are 12 per unit, so the bigger boxes are 24 per unit. Out of that funding, more than $200,000 worth of Narcan has been shipped to 100 public agencies. We've cycled through a bunch just going through the holidays and catching up after the holidays, but we'll keep, uh, we'll keep enough to get quick orders out. Wei says he's glad the program is back in full swing, but there's still more work to do. Ultimately, I think we need to provide better drug education. We need to provide uh, mechanisms for people to get drug rehabilitation and treatment programs. Public agencies can request Narcan through the Department of Health and Welfare. Wei says they're shipping Narcan out as fast as it comes in. Even though the Narcan that's being distributed out of here is not for the general public, Chief Wei tells me that people who live in Idaho can still get Narcan through a prescription from their doctor or the Panhandle Health District. In Pulse Falls, Nathan Hyun, Krem 2 News. Police say Harrington ran into a house right after the shooting and several other adults and children hid to protect themselves. Today, we learn the 44-year-old has a lengthy criminal history. Your Honor, this is number seven, Torin Harrington. Torin Harrington is a convicted felon. He's not allowed to own or possess guns, but Spokane police say he used one to shoot a man at this home Tuesday off West Francis. Police say they found the victim outside a short distance away with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. Officers say they found Harrington inside the home, along with several children and adults hiding to protect themselves. Harrington sat in court Wednesday, shaking his head as Commissioner Eugene Cruz read off the charges against him, including several counts of assault, kidnapping, and burglary. Do you understand those charges, sir? Uh, I guess so, yes. According to police, the shooting happened the day after a domestic violence incident. Investigators say Harrington hit a female friend with a gun and forced her into a car before driving around the city. The next day, police say Harrington returned to the home where he also lives and shot a man who's friends with the woman. Officers say the 44-year-old also threatened and pointed the gun at other people inside the home. Harrington has 26 adult convictions, according to court records, and a pending assault charge in Spokane Municipal Court. Prosecutors asked the court to set bond in the amount of $100,000. Based on the reservation and the uh, criminal history that uh, is concerning and does create uh, concerns for community uh, safety, the court will be adopting the bond that is being requested uh, by the state. That, will, that bond will be set at $100,000. Harrington remains in jail tonight. In Spokane, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. I'm at the Spokane County Courthouse where a convicted murderer is hoping a judge will reduce his sentence to 30 years. Now, the last time he was here, that very same judge gave him a 50 year sentence. In 1994, a 17 year old Kevin Boot, alongside his cousin, kidnapped, robbed and killed Felicia Reese in cold blood. A jury convicted him two years later of aggravated first degree murder, costing him life in prison without parole. But then a 2012 U.S. Supreme Court ruling determined a juvenile couldn't be sentenced to life without parole. That's why five years later, Judge Raymond Clary resentenced Boot to 50 years with credit for time served. The Court of Appeals later ruled that sentence is the same as life in prison and should be reissued. The hearing for Boot's second resentencing started this morning with a letter from Felicia's mother read by a family friend. My soul aches every single day since my beloved daughter was thoughtlessly murdered. Kevin Boot does not deserve mercy just as he did not show mercy towards Felicia. Then the defense called on Grady Mitchell, who shared a prison cell with Boot for 20 years. In that time, he says Boot became remorseful and took steps to change. Have you seen in any other inmate you've known over the years the kind of rehabilitation, the maturation, the calmness settle on anybody else better than it settled on Kevin? I would say equal to. The state is requesting a 40-year sentence, while Boot is seeking a 30-year sentence with credit for time served. He's already served almost 30 years. This would not release him from prison, but it would make him eligible for parole soon. Judge, you're not setting him free. 
you are setting the date when the parole board can begin looking at him. Boot told the judge he's changed. He even listed several volunteer redemption programs he's participated in and now leading in prison. What is it you want? Um, the opportunity for people to see me for who I am now and not who I was at 17. Who were you at 17? Monster. Boot closed by apologizing to Felicia's family, to his own family, and the Spokane community for what he did. Attorneys wrapped up presenting their evidence and arguments, and the judge will consider all of that, and now we'll wait for the ruling. Reporting from the Spokane County Courthouse, Amanda Rowley, Grim 2 News. I'm out here at Stancraft Jet Center in Hayden, where earlier today, Idaho Governor Brad Little made the announcement that the state's launch program has proven to be a lot more popular than even they anticipated. To me, this is going to be a big game changer. But for Timberlake High School seniors Alicia Cameron and Andrew Pettibone, Idaho's new launch programs already changing the postgraduate game for them. And for me, a lot of more doors opened up. It was like I wanted to go, but I knew that I couldn't afford it, so I was like, I'm not going. And then I saw the Idaho launch, and I got signed up for it, and I was like, okay, if I get it, then I'm going to school. Uh, Idaho Governor Brad Little made the announcement Thursday in Hayden, saying more than 12,000 high school seniors either submitted or started the application for launch grants. That number breezed past the 7,500 state officials initially anticipated. We've got good sign up in every area of the state. Uh, we've got uh, good sign up from every county, every legislative district. The launch program offers graduating students who apply and are looking to go into a high demand career, either 80% of tuition or up to $8,000 in grants. Some of those high demand jobs include heavy and tractor trailer drivers, welders and dental hygienists. The program opened up this fall for applications and already the first round of contingent award letters were sent out last month. Both Cameron and Pettibone were among the first to receive the award. Now that they do have it, they're feeling better about the future. The rest senior years just keep on doing what I'm doing and try to just fly low. Now the next round of contingent award letters are set to go out by the end of March. Now there is still time to apply for the program, however, it does close in April. In Hayden, Cody Proctor, Crem2 News. Spokane Valley is one of the fastest growing cities in Washington. Is that a testament to the infrastructure or the businesses? Um, what would you credit to that growth? I think it's infrastructure. I think it's the businesses. I think it's our beautiful area. I mean, we have the river, we have skiing close by, we have so many lakes and fishing. So anybody who's interested in the outdoors, this is a great place to live. Um, historically, our prices have been slightly lower than some of the other places, particularly Seattle. What are some of the prior priorities you have with this term? Is there anything you would like to do different? Public safety, I think, is a big priority of mine. We just recently had a study done that told us we need a lot more police officers for the size of our city. We kind of grew and then didn't fill in with new police officers, partially because of the challenge of finding people who want to be police in this day and age. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges that are facing Spokane Valley right now? I think some of the challenges are actually brought on by our state. Um, you know, the state changes regulations. It's, they've made it more expensive to build a new home. Um, by changing the requirements in the code. Um, they've made it harder for us to hire police officers because of some of the things that the police are no longer allowed to do in Washington State. I think some of the reports we've seen from the last year is, is there a collaboration between Spokane and Spokane Valley with the homelessness? What is Spokane Valley doing? And it is a regional problem. Um, I think that one of the biggest things that came out of our attending those meetings was them finding out that we were already contributing millions of dollars towards homelessness. We really want to help people who want to be helped. And so we're focusing currently on um, school children. How do you hope to encourage more people to turn out to these conversations um, and with this new building too, to attract people to be interested in what's happening with the city? How do you hope to involve the community? We did hire a communications manager who's working on that. We're on Twitter now, so we have Twitter, Facebook. We're getting into social media more than we ever did before. Slowly but surely building that up, I would love to see our city chambers packed every single Tuesday because that's how we know what people want.
It's a sobering report for 16 communities across Washington. Under the Climate Commitment Act, the state's Department of Ecology looked at air pollution in these vulnerable areas. It's just very important to allow the state to start addressing some of these disparities and injustices. The findings are concerning. We looked at the human-caused uh, sources, so we're talking about Wood stove smoke, we're talking about industry, we're talking about traffic. Spokane and Spokane Valley are the only spots in eastern Washington listed as overburdened by air pollution. People in these communities are more likely to have health problems and may even die sooner than others living elsewhere in Washington state. More likely to have certain health conditions, including conditions that affect their hearts and lungs, because we're talking about the outdoor air that people breathe. That's not really new information. What is new and surprising is what researchers found about how air pollution can take years off your life. But more specifically, we estimate um, that people aged 65 or older are twice as likely to die from air pollution that comes from these human sources. People in overburdened communities live, on average, 2.4 years less than others across the state. People of color and low-income groups, which the report says are more likely to live near pollutants like roads and waste sites, are even more disproportionately impacted. The main pollutant in Washington is fine particles from wildfires. But this report didn't factor in wildfire smoke. Now the department's adding more air monitoring sites, including in Spokane. To get more specific data about what are the air pollutants of concern in each of this, these communities. The department will also do more outreach, including visits to spots like Spokane for community feedback. Shannon Mowdy, CREM2 News. Yeah, so I actually have my Christmas tree right here with me. Uh, my Christmas tree is teeny tiny Charlie Brown tree, so it's gonna definitely follow all the rules, uh, but some of yours might. So I just wanna go over all the different things you have to do if you are going to put out your tree on the curb for the city of Spokane to pick up. Number one, they only take real trees, no flocked trees, no fake trees, and you have to take all the decorations off of your tree before putting it out on the curb. The other thing, it has to be smaller than six feet. If it's larger than six feet, you can cut it in half, and the tree trunk has to be less than three inches in diameter. Once you have all of those rules followed for your actual tree, last thing, just make sure when you put it on your curb to put it at least three feet away from your other trash bins so crews can come in and do their thing. Now, if you don't want to get rid of your tree quite yet and you want to wait until later in January or you just don't want to do curbside pickup at all, here's a list of some of the places that you can take your tree that will accept Christmas trees. The other thing the city of Spokane suggests doing is reaching out to local organizations, local Girl Scout or Boy Scout troops, even local high schools. Some of them run programs where they'll take care of your tree for a small fee, and then that fee, of course, goes to help local community organizations. If you are, though, choosing to do curbside pickup, that starts today and goes until January 12th. So you have this week and next week to put your tree out. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crem2 News. Thank you for joining us here on Crem2 Plus for a look at some of the biggest news stories of the past week. For the most current news throughout the weekend, you can watch our latest newscast right here on Crem2 Plus. Just look for them in the bottom navigation menu. I'm Tim Pham. Thanks for watching.